Welcome back to Savage Fabrication. Been on a little bit of a hiatus, just been building really cool turbochargers. In this video that you're gonna see today, we're going to go over the P700. It's gonna be a full overview, going over everything on the outside of the pump, where all the tools are at, what's underneath all the covers, slight access to some of the parts with a real basic overview of what some of the components do, how to access them, what they are, some torque specs, tips and tricks, and fun stuff like that. So we really hope that you enjoy this video and we're gonna get right into the P700. So we're gonna start here with, uh, this is a P7100 pump, P7100. To find out which version of the pump that you have, if you don't know where the truck originally came from, you can use this ID tag. The ID tag is almost always located underneath the throttle linkage cover. So you just take out these three M10s um, drop the linkage over and you get this number and what you'll have to use is this PES6P number right here this will tell you every single thing that there is to know about the pump including its manufacturing year what version of the P700 it is there are different versions wrong. I've always looked them up by this lower long number down here this designates how many cylinders there are and all that other fun stuff <clears throat> there's a bunch of different places for you to Feed fuel to them. The factory spot is right here. They are factory helicoiled. You can also remove this. I believe this has a factory helicoil. No, sorry, not that. That's a, that's a mount. This one doesn't have it. Normally they'll have, sometimes they'll have two. One here, one here, uh, one at the nose, and then two on the back side. This pump does not. This is a 160 pump, just in case everybody wants to know. So it's rated at 160 flywheel horsepower. And there's some differences between this one versus the 175, the 180, and the 215. So, next thing to get into is they are huge. They're about three times the size of a piece of 100. This from here back is our governor body. And then this small section up here, it goes down to about here. From here down is our AFC control system. And then down here is a cam. The end of the cam we can see here, which is the pump snout with the taper. Oh, sorry, it's three times larger than a VE pump. So from here down is a camshaft. The camshaft, the end of the camshaft we can see right here with the tapered snout. There's a keyway in there. The keyway is only used in two situations. One, it is used for a, a adjustable pump gear. And two, it is used when it's on a, a pump bench so they can turn these things without having to tighten down a taper shaft to the proper torque spec that this would normally use. The torque spec that we have been using for over six years when we do timing changes is 165 foot-pounds. I have not had one gear slip on the shaft at 165 foot-pounds. I do with the gear pulled forward, do brake clean the gear and the snout as best as we can. Don't go overkill, but the brake clean or an evaporative type stuff that doesn't leave a residue will evaporate out of the oil and not cause any issues. The only issue that I kind of see and why not to go crazy with it is if you have a RTV'd front cover, um, it can soften the RTV and cause leaks. So don't go too crazy with it. This here is the called, uh, this is the rack cover. So often uh, common terminology is use a Mac rack plug. How the rack plug works is it is a rack stop. We have our rack right here. So that's the end of our rack, which is connected to all the plungers. And what they do with a Mac rack plug is the depth of this. So the rack is, there's an indent in here. It's hard to see, but you can see that the, the rack bottoms out against this plug. What the Mac rack plug is, or any aftermarket plug, they just machine this deeper and allows the rack to go farther. You want to be very careful with those. If the rack travels too far, it will fall down out of its guide and it'll hang. It'll actually be um, down a little bit. And when it falls down out of its guide, it will not return. So it's stuck at essentially wide open throttle. And there's nothing that you can do about it other than a fuel diverter valve, which is mandated in truck and tractor pulling at certain levels or a air cutoff guillotine, often called, which is also mandated in quite a few pulling sanctioning bodies. Six um, 
individual plungers for the six individual cylinders. This is the big difference and a big jump from the VE pump, which had one plunger for all six cylinders with a, a distributor bore. This here is the, to get is the where the governor springs are if you want to change them out. To change, to pull this guy out, a lot of times there's a safety wire across it. Just cut the safety wire. It's just a thing for warranty stuff and these trucks are so old, obviously they're not going to get warranty in time tune. One thing to be very careful with is when you take this eight millimeter loose and you pull this off, there's a keyway here. Um, this keyway is floating and they are super small and very easy to lose. Here we go. So here's the keyway. I got lucky one time to have found it when I had dropped it. But I've been asked several times in the past, do I have a keyway for this? And no, I do not. I believe there are shops now that do sell these keyways in case you do lose it. But that's how that works. All right, so that comes off and then you can, this is a 15 16 or 22 millimeter, either one. Uh, sorry, no, 22 millimeter, 15 16 will do this. This is 13 16 either one. Take this off, we can actually see just got lucky that we have one governor assembly actually partially in view. So on this governor assembly, oh my hat get in the way, you just use a small flat blade screwdriver and you can carefully turn these out. And we can go over a whole video on just about, we won't necessarily take this one apart to that depth, although we can. This is a bad pump. It's got a sticky plunger on one of these barrels here. But you'll remove this, take that off, take the retainer, the adjuster off then the springs all come out and there's shims underneath a lot of the 4k gov kits have you remove all the springs and only reuse the idle spring the idle spring is the biggest spring on the od but that's where the governor winter house there's two of them there's one on this side and 100 deg 180 degrees out of phase is the other one <clears throat> one thing that i see a lot of these trucks not have done the throttle stop, never seen a need to mess with the throttle stop. I'm sure there's people that have played with it. I've never seen it, but a lot of these trucks over time start to idle lower and lower. The idle adjustment is this guy back here. So this tang rests on this tab and that is the idle setting. To adjust it, there is a lock nut underneath. You'll take the lock nut loose. Both of these heads are 10 millimeters and then you'll adjust this top one. One of the tricks that I found to do rut good is to bump the idle up to where you want it to be, but stay slightly low as when you tighten the lock nut, um, it, the idle does tend to go up a little bit. So to try and do it in one shot, doing it that route makes it really easy. So, but this is our throttle linkage right here. This is actually the fuel shutoff arm. Oops, put it on backwards. <laughs> yeah, it's in bad shape. You're gonna time your truck or the gear slips and the thing stock. You do not need to buy a full timing kit. What you can do is use the timing pin on the back of the cam gear. So it's on the back of the timing case cover below the pump. There's a plastic pin with a little divot that goes into the back of the cam gear and it's set up by whoever built the engine or if it's OEM, it's set up by the OEM manufacturers. That pin in the cam gear lines up at the same time that this tool in here. So uh, Cummins and Bosch give you everything you need to get your truck back to stock timing. This is calibrated. This whole thing can slide up and down. If you have a pump built, a lot of times the tamper proofs are gone. Do not loosen the t these screws here unless you have a way to recalibrate this setting because this will adjust where, when this pin lines up, is TDC. So normally the pin faces out. This is in the run position. And when you want to use it as a tool, you take this out and you flip it around. Now if we look closely, we have a female slot in this tool. And there is a steel male side of the tool that rotates around inside the pump and is set by the builder or the factory. In this case, it's going to be 12 and a half degrees. 
So it's not in view right now and it's so dark in there you probably can't see it. But that guy comes around once and when it lines up, when this tool can slide into there over the top of that steel, basically the male side of this, we know that with the engine lined up on its cam pin and the pump lined up on its pin that the pump is set at to inject 12 and a half degrees before TDC. And you can tighten everything up, come back, recheck, make sure everything slides in how it's supposed to. If it does, you're good to rock and roll. If not, you have to drag in. And you can put this all back together. You do not need to tighten any of these to an extreme degree. One thing to note when this is on the truck and you take this out, it will drop about half a quart of oil out of there. A quarter quart, half quart. This guy right here is the oil feed from the motor. It is, it's, you can use a 9 16 wrench to take it loose if you ever taken this off or putting it back on. That's the easiest way I found to do it. They are supposedly a restrictor, but I honestly haven't found a reason why a fitting this size. I think most of the whole orifices through them are the same size. They call it a restrictor, but I have both restrictors and regular fittings that are these kind of adapters and the whole threat size is the same. But to be safe, if you're doing a 24 valve conversion, buy the restrictor, it's, it's cheap. The way the oil gets out of the pump, oh boy, is through these front holes here. So these front two holes here are the drains. They drain the oil into the gear case and also help lubricate the gears themselves. Not necessarily needed. Um, it's needed for street driven trucks, but when you get in the truck and tractor pulling with extreme pumps, you can, they, a lot of the guys run what's called a sealed pump, where you change the oil every pull, just about, or every drag, you know, or drag racing event, or every truck pull event, you'll just change the oil out of the pump. They'll have a drain down at the bottom to drain the oil out. It'll be drilled and tapped down underneath the pump. This guy will be plugged off and you will fill through this port. If it has an AFC, you'll through, fill through this port. If it's a Ag Governor pump, there's a vent on the top of here that comes off that you fill the oil through. So that's a self-contained pump and these are non-self-contained pumps. Air feed to our diaphragm. Pre-boost adjustment, we will probably do all the AFC. Maybe we'll do AFC in the next video because that's a long video. We don't want to get these going too crazy long every single time. Underneath this guy here is your star wheel adjustment, which is how much rack travel you're allowed to have per PSI inside of this case here, in the back case. The pre-boost sets how much rack travel you have before the AFC foot gets in the way, is what that does. So with this this far in, we have a considerable amount of rack travel available before the foot stops us and we have to wait for boost to come up. If we go to like a big injector or a bigger DV or a larger turbocharger where we don't want that much feeling down low, we'll back this guy out and take a lot of the tension off and that'll help the truck run clean and in a lot of cases make more torque if we're flooding the, cha if we're flooding the chamber. Here's our fuel plate. This is a OEM fuel plate. It has a profile on it. If you wanna grind this flat right here, go for it. That's just about what everybody does, whether you get your pump built by somebody or it's someone else's homebrew mod. As when you grind it to a zero plate and take the profile off of the thing, we're now just using this as a rack stop. So we can say if we have a pump that flows 400 cc's and we only want to use 350 of those, we can slide this backwards and lock it in as a rack stop and then we'll do all of our AFC tuning as far as how much cc per pound of boost we get. We'll do it all with the AFC housing and the AFC housing is fully capable of doing that. This extra step isn't needed once you get into a performance application, but we don't ever recommend taking this out. This is kind of your last line of defense on keeping the rack from getting hung. Removing these has the probability of allowing the rack to travel so far. Again, where it drops out of the end of the, out of its guide, hangs the rack at wide open throttle, and there's nothing. Most street trucks do not have an air guillotine or a fuel diverter valve. In this case, the thing goes on a runaway. The only thing you can do is put it in the neutral and wait for it to run out of fuel or 
blow up. This is the AFC foot here. This is what's going to be bottoming out uh, against our plate. We head on where we set this. The AFC housing is also slotted for another adjustment as far as pre-boost. Is realistically, all the slotting does is like it's a coarse adjustment on pre-boost. This is your fine adjustment on pre-boost. This here is directly attached to this. So if we were to back this out, we would see this whole foot move this direction. And if we tighten it up, the foot would again move in that direction. In another video as well, we will get into the best shutoff system, how it all works. Yeah, it's because the rack's stuck. Mega stuck. <laughs> they should never be that stuck. If they are that stuck and you have to use force to move the shutoff lever, you probably have a rack issue if you're fighting a no start or a low power condition where you might it might run and then allow the fuel to go this far but when you floor it and go this far because it's a spring system there's no hard levers con connecting the throttle linkage to the rack itself you can stretch the spring all the way and the rack would still stay in the same place so it's a, not ever a bad idea to if you're having issues like that and fuel pressure and everything else checks out good then that's probably where I would go next with it. I feel pretty safe saying that that covers just about everything for just a small introduction into the P7100. So I think that about covers it. In the next video we'll get the tamper proofs off some of these things. We plan on doing a decent disassembly of it because this pump's no good. We already take, have taken the barrel hold down nuts loose at least on one of the barrels we're going to pull a barrel out and show you what a plunger looks like show you what a barrel looks like we might just take them all out and then we can see down at the cam or at least get an idea i don't know how crazy i want to get with it um, but we're definitely going to at least get to the barrel and the plunger i don't think there's any sense in getting into the governor assembly how it works because it's just a weighted flyweight assembly that just retracts backwards on the rack itself. It's no different than a, the, how the VE pumps work. Just It's a different design, but it's the same principle. It's just overpowering the spring in the opposite direction. It's actually, you could say that it is a hard connection where you can have um, the throttle all the way down, but as the governor weights um, fly out, it's going to push it back and the spring just gets pulled farther apart because the governor's overpowering the system to hold it at a certain maximum RPM. So I think with that we'll probably end it there and on the next one we'll do AFC and possibly, well, actually let's do AFC and we'll do delivery valves in the next video. Well, this is just an entry video into the P700. We're going to get way into this thing because all the basics because there's, we've, there's a lot out there that don't really even have an idea of where things are at on the pump when we're doing some instructional stuff over the phone on what to adjust to help tune smoke and do other things. This will also give you, maybe make you feel safer when making timing adjustments or other adjustments because they're not as maybe um, extreme as what somebody might think or doing a DV valve change. And we'll go over those. These are all currently loose. Doing a governor change, how to do a governor change, how we do them at least where the timing tools are at. A lot of people don't even know that the pump comes with its own tools. I think that about wraps it up for the P100 overview. We went over quite a few things, but real basic, just to really get you a good introduction into the P100 pump itself, how you can look up what yours is using the nameplate, or you can use the gear of the truck, as well as it was a manual transmission, automatic transmission, and what state that the truck was manufactured for will change what version of the P700 came on it. So with that all being said, in the next video we will be going over the AFC and the delivery valves. I think that's a good next step to get into. Uh, we got a bunch of tests we want to do to kind of show you how long the injection duration event is using a degree wheel and some of my pump timing tools where we can turn the pump on the table. Normally we'd, I'd use that to turn the pump on the truck itself for doing timing changes. 
So I've got a lot of cool experiments to do with it as well as a breakdown to give everybody an idea of what's inside of these pumps and how quickly they're working as well as why they're so good and where their flaws are at along with that. It is still a mechanical injection pump. It does have a pumping curve that will go up the faster the motor turns and then as well as fall when the pump's calibration is no longer able to keep up with the engine RPM itself. So we're going to go over all kinds of fun stuff like that. We got our shirt on the website. Don't forget to go check those out. Got restocked in all sizes. And we got our new hats are going to be in on the website by Saturday. So you should see those on there pretty soon. Here's the back side of the hat. And here's the other side of the hat. Really nice. They are a snapback fit, so you can adjust it. I'm trying to not touch it too much because my hands are dirty. But please check that out. All that stuff goes right back into making more cool apparel. We've got all kinds of crazy ideas. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below about anything that we might have missed in our just basic video of the PC100 uh, that we can go over in future videos. We do plan to go over all kinds of stuff. So if it's something that we didn't cover or lightly covered that you think we're going to cover in the future, just let us know, or if there's anything that we did miss that should be mentioned, let us know. We'll get it in there. Uh, thank you for watching.